You remember the Neta V, right? You know, the small, compact, budget EV that costs less than 100,000 ringgit and has a few coiners cut to hit that price range? Well, this is the Neta S and it's, well, it's not like that at all. The Neta S sits at the complete opposite end of the spectrum compared to the Neta V. This is a sort of premium electric sedan that's around the same size as the BMW 5 Series or a Tesla Model S. This sits near the top of Neta's lineup, below only the GT Coupe. Now, the Neta S is one of the few cars that local distributor Intro Synergy has confirmed for our market. Unlike the Neta V, which comes in the quarter three of this year, you're going to have to wait a little bit of a while for this one. This is slated to come maybe in one or two years' time. In stark contrast to the Neta V, the Neta S is long and low, with a wide stance and a sweeping coupe-like roofline. The front of the car looks quite aggressive, with this large grille and split headlights. You've also got flush door handles for less aerodynamic drag, and at the back, you have the full-width taillight bar with fins that should also make it more streamlined. The car also plays very cool welcome and goodbye light sequence when you lock and unlock the car, followed by quite an obnoxious noise. <laughs> it's really loud. But of course, you're here for the scissor doors. I mean, you can get normal doors if you want, but come on, this just looks so cool. The trouble is, it's a bit too sensitive. There's plenty of clearance between me and the door, and even so, when I pull on this handle, it stops. I really have to step out of the way for it to open, like so. Even when it's fully open, the gap between the door and the body is quite narrow, which means that if you're someone of a slightly larger size, well, tough luck. The disparity between this and the Neta V only grow wider on the inside. First of all, you finally get a steering column that adjusts not only for height, but also for reach. There are also powered seats now with height adjustment, although I feel it still doesn't go low enough, I feel like I'm going to hit this header at any moment. You've also got what looks like, at first glance, quite a nice interior. You've got this sporty steering wheel, you've got a massive portrait touchscreen, and you've also got this wide center console as well, giving it this really premium look. You've also got some nice soft plastic on the door cards, on the dashboard, you've got some leather on the seats, and some suede on the seat bolsters and the center console as well. However, once you get below chest height, it sort of starts to fall apart. The lower half of the dashboard feels a bit cheap and nasty, and the same goes for this fake carbon trim as well, even though the bootlit spoiler is real carbon. You also don't get a lot of buttons in this car. Everything is controlled through this touchscreen, including the aircon, and you've got capacitive buttons everywhere, including on the steering wheel, and these have the worst haptics I've ever felt in a car or a phone or any sort of tech. The window switches are also touch operated, which isn't great. And worst of all, you don't get four separate switches for the driver's side. You have to press this rear button and only then can you operate the rear windows. That's not good. Still, you do at least get lots of tech. You've got a 17.6 inch centre touchscreen, you've got a 12.3 inch touchscreen for the front passenger, and you've also got a 13.3 inch display for the driver as well. The center touchscreen is plenty bright and has good colors, but it's all in Chinese, it's not activated because we're not in China, so we can't use some of the features. And the one thing I've noticed is that the menu where you control everything in this car is a little bit slow to boot up. Also because there are so many new features compared to the Neta V, using the screen itself is a little bit complicated but you do get a lot of features in here, including navigation and so on. And because everything is controlled through the touchscreen, you can even adjust the seats using these buttons over here. Also, you've got seat heating, seat ventilation, and you've also got a massage function you can press over here. Oh yes. What's more, the front passenger can use that touchscreen over there to control the media and 
watch videos, you've got the instrument display which is very legible and it shows all the data that you could want even though the graphics on the LCD screen are a little bit cheap. You've even got this very big heads-up display that will apparently even project augmented reality navigation directions, you know, big arrows that just show up in front of you. Elsewhere, you've got plenty of storage space down here and under the armrest as well. You've got twin cup holders down there. You've got a T wireless charger. You get one USB-A and one USB-C port. You've got an inner selfie camera over here for reasons that are unknown to me. And you've also got an electrochromic glass roof that you can tint through the touchscreen. Although, do beware, it is quite slow to dim. Finally, you get a 21 speaker sound system in here with headrest speakers so you can really get in the zone. Now, let's check out the rear. Oh, before we move to the back, there's one more thing I forgot to mention. The windows are made of laminated double glazed glass. We should only insulate the cabin against heat. It should also reduce road and wind noise. Back here, the Neta S offers plenty of legroom, as you'd expect, given this car's length. Unfortunately, because the batteries are located underneath the floor, the floor itself has to be pushed up and so do your knees. Also, you can't really slide your feet underneath the front seats and the rear headroom is pretty poor as a result of the sloping roofline. Still, you do get rear aircon vents and another set of USB-A and USB-C ports. Now, the display up there, you would think, is to control the rear aircon, but it's just a display showing you the clock and the interior temperature. No more, no less. But my most favourite feature lies within this rear centre seat. You've got power reclining rear seats. This is S-class levels of stuff. You've also got twin rear cup holders in here, even though the lid is a little bit scratchy. And you've got a little bit of storage underneath this sort of flimsy lid over here. Open the boot. And the first thing you notice is that despite appearances, this car is not a hatchback. It has a normal boot lid, which is a bit of a problem given the car's short tail. And that means that the opening is a bit small. Also, boot space is okay, but not generous, especially next to the premium sedans it's supposed to compete against. But there is a ski hatch that you can open up so that you can slide longer items through the cabin. There's also a decently sized front boot as well. The Neta S is available in either single or dual motor variants, both of them far more powerful than the Neta V. The single motor, rear wheel drive model, produces 228 horsepower and 310 Nm of torque, enough to get it from 0 to 100 km per hour in 6.9 seconds. The car you see here is the dual motor all wheel drive model, which doubles the horsepower and torque to 456 horsepower and 620 Nm of torque. This slashes 3 seconds of the Century Sprint, which you complete in 3.9 seconds. The top speed of both models is 185 km per hour. Rear wheel drive models get the option of a 65 kilowatt hour battery, providing a range of up to 520 km, as well as an 85 kilowatt hour battery with a 715 km range. As for all wheel drive models, you get a larger 91 kilowatt hour battery, but despite this, the range is slightly shorter at 650 km. You can also buy a rear wheel drive model with a 44 kilowatt hour battery and a 1.5 litre range extending engine. Now that provides a total range of 1,156 kilometers. All these figures are on the CLTC cycle in China, which is slightly more lenient than the WLTP cycle we are used to. Last but not least, the safety features. Unlike the Neta V, which only has two airbags and stability control to its name, the Neta S has all the driver assist you could want, including adaptive cruise control and lane centering assist for level 2 semi-autonomous driving. In China, you can even spec LiDAR sensors, which should provide more autonomy when conditions permit. So, there you have it, the Neta S. Are you excited to see this thing come to Malaysia, or do you just like these cool-ass doors? Let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and ring the notifications bell icon so you don't miss any of our future videos. As always, stay awesome. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.